Can you name a black inventor? George Washington Carver invented peanut butter. Okay, can you name another one? Michael Jordan invented the art of jumping really high. Really? It's no wonder that we don't know that much about black history. We get one month out of the year to study it, and even then we only get the greatest hits. Carver invented peanut butter. Martin Luther King had a dream. Rosa Parks didn't give up her seat on the bus. Michael Jordan battled aliens and won. But KB, I'm not racist, but... Shush! No, no, stop right there. Nothing good comes after saying that. It can be hard to get people to take an interest in something that they might see as other than. I mean, people of color have been talking about black history for ages. In books, in music, on YouTube, in TED Talks, but once March rolls around, we just sort of stop listening. It's like we have to be bribed into paying attention. What do you bribe white people with? Pizza? Kale? IPAs? A coupon for 25% off of white guilt? You know, it's probably that last one. The point is, black history is more than just peanuts. People of color have created lots of interesting things, and useful things, and even life-saving things. And these are just a few of them. Here are 10 black inventors who changed the way we live. Number one, Elijah McCoy. The railroad system is a classic American icon that's right up there with baseball, and apple pie, and piles of meat that'll give you angina. Early trains were clunky and slow, and they required a lot of upkeep, which meant frequent stops for maintenance and lubrication. If your train broke down in the middle of nowhere, you were really in the middle of nowhere. Oregon Trail, you have died of dysentery nowhere. Elijah McCoy has over 50 inventions to his name, but the one he's probably best known for is the oil drip cup, which he patented in 1872. Its function is pretty self-explanatory. The cup was designed to regularly drip oil where it was needed, which meant fewer stops, which meant that people and goods could travel across the country faster and easier. His invention was a huge hit that revolutionized the industry. Railroad companies all across the United States began putting in orders for McCoy's cup. Naturally, there were plenty of inventors looking to make a quick buck on a cheap imitation, but discerning businessmen weren't fooled. And they were able to say things like, I don't want some kind of cheap that's going to break off its hinges at the first opportunity. I want the real McCoy. And that is where that expression comes from. Number two and three, Mary and Mildred Davidson. Now I'm going to briefly talk about periods. So if you're too immature to handle the topic, you can fast forward to this time in the video where I'll be talking about something else. Are they gone? Good! It goes without saying, but nobody enjoys that time of the month. Eh, close enough. But before modern feminine hygiene products, women had to use cloth pads and rags when they got their period, and it was every bit as awkward as you might think it is. Lots of shifting and bunching and oh, it. I guess I have to burn the skirt now. The modern tampon has been around since 1929, but women didn't really use it back then because it was considered to be indecent. Okay, slow down, Ezekiel. It's a tampon, not a dildo. Absolutely nothing about this process is fun. In 1956, the Davidsons invented the sanitary belt. Basically, it was like the world's least sexy garter belt. It wasn't very comfortable, but it kept your pad in place. Three years later, Mary invented a moisture-resistant pocket for the belt, thus helping countless women save their clothes during Shark Week. It took Mary and Mildred 30 years to get a patent on their invention because the company that was originally interested in it didn't particularly want a product that had been invented by black women. You chumps. I hope you got your pubes caught in that adhesive backing. If you skipped ahead to this part, welcome back, weenies. Mary and Mildred didn't have technical training, and they didn't make their inventions to get rich. They just wanted to make people's lives easier, particularly people with disabilities. They went on to invent the toilet paper dispenser, a card game called Family Tradition, a wall-mounted backwasher for those hard-to-reach places, and the carrier attachment that goes on walkers. Number 4. Benjamin Banneker 
Banneker was a writer, mathematician, civil rights activist, farmer, and astronomer, and one of the first African Americans to gain recognition in the field of science. He was also born of two free black people, which in 1730s colonial America was kind of like being born of an albino tiger and a unicorn. Banneker was largely self-taught, and he was incredibly bright, a sort of a proto Neil deGrasse Tyson. He first received national acclaim when he was hired to be part of the surveying team for the federal territory, which is what we now call Washington, D.C. He also built one of the first pocket watches in America, which was so well made that it kept running for 50 years after he died. Banneker's understanding of astronomy allowed him to successfully predict the 1789 solar eclipse, beating the pants off his white colleagues and their faulty calculations. But what he's best known for are his farmer's almanacs. Dubbed Banneker's Almanacs, this was a six-volume set that was published between 1792 and 1797. Subjects included medicine and medical treatments, the tides, astronomy, and eclipses, which he had personally calculated. In fact, the Farmer's Almanac is still in circulation to this day. He even took the time to send the first volume to then Secretary of State Thomas Jefferson, and closed with it was a letter asking him to take a hard look inward. Could he, Jefferson, really consider himself to be a friend of liberty when he himself was a slave owner? Giving someone a gift while also calling them out on their bullshit. <laughs> That's gangsta. Number five, Jan Matzliger. Thumbs up if you think I totally botched that pronunciation. Matzliger was the son of a Dutch engineer and the Surinamese slave in what's now the Republic of Suriname in South America. As a young man, he emigrated to Pennsylvania after an apprenticeship in one of his father's factories. His contribution to the world revolutionized something that we use every day but don't always give a lot of thought to, our shoes. Back when Metzliger was a kid, shoes had to be assembled the hard way, by hand. Even when parts of shoes could be made in factories, the most challenging part was still attaching the upper part to the sole. You needed a particular set of skills in order to finish assembling a shoe. These laborers were called shoe lasters and one with Liam Neeson-like skills could assemble 50 pairs of shoes in a 10-hour workday. Because people believed that only human hands could put a shoe together, shoe lasters had the rest of the industry by the balls, sometimes deliberately slowing production down to the point where their fellow laborers could face months of unemployment. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you know how to sew this on? No? Well then, I suggest you sit back and have a nice hot cup of shut the f*** up. But in 1883, Metzliger invented the lasting machine, which enabled shoe factories to produce between 150 and 700 pairs of shoes a day. His invention effectively cut the price of shoes in half. He made it possible for even the poorest among us to have at least one pair. Yet, because he was a black man, he's been largely overlooked from the history books, although the United States Postal Service did honor him with a commemorative stamp in 1991. So, the next time you get your hands on a truly fabulous pair of shoes, say, thank you, Jan. Hashtag, thank you, Jan. Number six, Garrett Morgan. Imagine a world without trapezoids. Scary, right? Early America was like that. Miles and miles of lawless roads where the one with the best vehicle was king. Essentially like Mad Max if people also rode horses and bicycles. Early models of traffic lights started popping up around 1913, but instead of a stack of colored lights, it was a cross-shaped beacon that flashed stop and go. But only stop and go. Needless to say, this was problematic. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are sh Garrett Morgan invented the traffic light with a third signal, giving motorists ample time to slow down and stop and therefore effectively reducing the number of traffic accidents. He also invented a hair straightening cream and founded the G.A. Morgan Hair Refining Company in 1905. I don't really feel qualified to address this topic. A white person trying to talk about the history and nuances of black hair is kind of like watching an octopus try to put on socks. I will instead direct you to this video boop, and tell you about one of Morgan's other notable inventions, the smoke hood. Boop! It looks like something a serial killer would wear, but smoke hoods allowed firefighters to swoop in and rescue people without being completely blinded by smoke. Later models of his invention would include a personal respirator system. Essentially, Garrett Morgan invented the gas mask, saving countless lives while also scaring the hell out of their descendants with photos like these. <sighs> Number seven, Marie Van Britten Brown. Marie Brown lived with her husband, Albert, in Queens, New York. 
Marie was a nurse and Albert was an electrician, so they kept odd hours. They lived in a rough neighborhood with a lot of burglaries and the police weren't exactly quick to the rescue whenever there was a problem. Some people in her shoes might build a personal armory or just resign themselves to having to replace the TV every three months. Look, I'm not even going to bother locking the door anymore. They're going to come in anyway. At least now I don't have to sweep up shards of glass. But their combined knowledge and ingenuity helped them create the first home security system. The original invention comprised of peepholes at different eye levels for children and for adults, a video camera, monitors, a two-way microphone, and an alarm. Marie is also credited for inventing the closed circuit TV. They co-patented their invention in 1966, thus paving the way for modern security systems used by families around the world. They made our homes feel a lot safer, and maybe helped make spy movies a lot more exciting. Number 8. Dr. Patricia Bath The saying goes, you don't know what you've got till it's gone, and that goes double infinity for something as precious as eyesight. During her internship, Dr. Bath began a study of patients she saw at two different hospitals, and the results startled her. Patients in Harlem had nearly double the rate of blindness as patients she saw at Columbia. They had lost their sight due to eye diseases that would have been totally treatable had they had access to adequate medical care. In light of this, Dr. Bath created a new medical discipline called Community Ophthalmology, a fusion of clinical ophthalmology, public health, and community medicine. Her model of care now treats the eyes of underserved communities all around the world. More children were able to get glasses and thus do better in school, and more adults were able to live healthier, happier lives. And if that's not badass enough for you, she also invented the laser faco probe, a highly specialized medical tool used in cataract surgery. It took five years of hard work before it was ready to use because her idea was years ahead of the existing technology. Yes! Finally! Someone with doctor in their name who uses a high-powered laser for good! Number 9. Louis Latimer Thomas Edison gets all the credit for inventing the light bulb, which is fart noise. But that's not why we're here. Focus, KB! Focus! Louis Latimer was an inventor and draftsman who notably improved the function of the light bulb. The wire dilio inside the light bulb is called a carbon filament. As electricity heats up the filament, it becomes so hot it glows, thus producing light. However, early filaments were pretty flimsy, and the light bulb would only work for a few days. Latimer's new carbon filament created a longer-lasting bulb, which became more cost-effective and thus cheaper to use. Electric lights became more commonplace, and they quickly became installed in private homes and on city streets. Latimer went on to improve the function of arc lighting and incandescent lighting. As more cities got electricity, Latimer went forth to help them. He was part of major planning teams installing electricity in the US, Canada, and England. But that's not all. Latimer was hired to help draft the patent application for Alexander Graham Bell's telephone. And if you still don't love him by now, Latimer also invented a device called the apparatus for cooling and disinfecting, which became a big hit in hospitals. Not only did it create climate controlled rooms, but it also helped improve the air quality. Oh, that's right, baby. Latimer invented air conditioning. Outside, the air may be hotter than a camel's taint, but inside, the air is cool and refreshing. God bless you, Latimer, you glimmering hero. Number 10, Dr. Charles Drew. Humans are fragile creatures, and it's ridiculously easy for us to hurt ourselves. We do it so often in the United States that one of us needs a blood transfusion roughly every two seconds. Drew developed a method of preserving blood plasma. He figured out that plasma can be dried and then reconstituted to use later. He also learned that plasma has a longer shelf life than whole blood, and that knowledge comes in handy if you've got a bunch of extra blood lying around that needs to go in storage. Drew's thesis on banked blood helped him become the first African-American man to earn a doctorate from the University of Columbia. His research was critical in the founding of the first blood banks collecting tens of thousands of pints in New York to help wounded soldiers in Europe during World War II. And he invented the Bloodmobile, or as I like to call it, the Vampire's Ice Cream Truck. Unfortunately, it took until about 1950 for the Red Cross to accept that all healthy blood is created equal, and that segregating blood bags based on the race of the donor is stupid, pointless, and ultimately wasteful. There were doctors who considered African American blood inferior for white soldiers, or there were white soldiers who didn't want African-American blood. Or, there were white soldiers who were unavailable for combat because they were too busy bleeding to death. <laughs> Dude. 
This is one time when having part of a black man inside you could save your life. Why you gotta make it weird? Hey, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I know I had a lot of fun putting it together and I hope that you learned something. If you can think of a cool African-American inventor that I didn't cover in my video, drop a comment down below and maybe I can include them in a part two. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.